Welcome here to the group exhibit Hydrogen and Fuel Cells at Hanover Fair 2013. My name is Alexa von Busser. I am the moderator for the last session today. And I invite you all to sit down to have a drink and as we are a public forum to, raise, uh, to, to ask questions whenever they come up to your mind. So just raise your hand and I come around with the microphone. My last guest for today is Proton Onsite, and this company calls itself the world leader in onsite gas generation. Its vice president, business development, is now coming on stage talking with me about scaling PEM electrolyzers for emerging energy markets. Please welcome Mr. Mark Schiller. Thank you very much. <coughs> Thank you for being here. My pleasure. Mark, <coughs> this is pretty self confident. Um, please give us a short introduction uh, to your company. So Proton Onsite was founded in 1996 and our sole purpose at that point was to develop hydrogen generation systems based on PEM electrolysis. And we've stayed focused on that goal through our, our, our entire uh, existence, 17 years now, developed a commercial portfolio of products that we sell all over the globe and uh, we consider ourselves to be a commercial company first. Uh, that also does R&D to continue to develop our products for the future. So why do you prefer this technology rather than others? Why do you prefer the PEM electrolyzer technology? So when the company was founded, the, the big vision at that time was that hydrogen fuel cell cars were on the horizon. And it looked as though that those companies were going to be using PEM fuel cells in the vehicles. Now that as of today has turned out to be true and we thought that it would make sense from a material standpoint as we develop our products to also go down the PEM technology pathway to leverage the cost economies of scale using similar materials for the long term. That's why we went with PEM. Our founders came from a PEM background uh, and that's what we've chosen to stay with. Okay, costs scaling up, that's uh, some points you already mentioned. Um, PEM is known as a rather expensive system to generate hydrogen. Um, why can you talk about reducing costs then? Well, again, I'm, I'm not sure that that's fact-based, that PEM is necessarily a more expensive technology. Uh, it depends on how you look at the concept of determining cost. If you're talking about total life cycle cost or, or lifetime cost, I would say PEM technology is not a more expensive technology versus others on the hydrogen generation side. Uh, and as we're scaling up, uh, this, this particular session is about scaling up for the emerging energy markets. And one of the things that we're uh, very focused on is we, we will see an approximate 40 to 50 percent cost reduction on a per kilowatt basis as we scale up to the multi-megawatt size electrolysis solution. And we've done that every time we've gone to a larger scale product throughout our history. We've seen reductions of 20, 30, and 40 percent. And we already see a pathway for reducing the cost by approximately 40 to 50 percent as we scale up for this latest iteration of, of product. Okay. We're uh, talking about uh, the markets later on, but um, staying um, at the scaling up point, we just heard that. Um, uh, Scaling up could be, uh, uh, or an aspect of scaling up could be increasing the membrane size. Do you agree with that? I do. Uh, we're actually doing that as well. Um, in order to scale up, we're, we have to increase the active area that's actually going to generate the hydrogen. So yes, we are scaling up. We actually have uh, some samples of what that size might look like in our, in our booth. I encourage you to stop by, but we are definitely scaling up uh, in order to get to the megawatt scale. Well, yeah, well, so you're facing the megawatt scale. That's, right. That's what you're... Yeah, ours is actually, you know, I've heard a lot uh, over the last few months and certainly in the first couple of days here about megawatt scale, singularly megawatt. And we're actually looking at multi-megawatt with this next scale up that we do beyond just one megawatt. Uh, we think the, the emerging energy markets, particularly renewable energy storage, is going to require more than one megawatt for energy storage. So we're looking beyond one megawatt and actually larger scale. Um, when we come to the, the storage point, um, which is maybe not the one you want to focus on, but um, I, I wanted to ask another question. I, I, I hear different opinions concerning um, the issue of hydrogen storage. Um, 
nowadays. Uh, what is what is uh, yours? I mean, do you see a problem here, um, cost-effective-wise as well? Well, I think different companies have different views on the whole renewable energy storage market space. Uh, we've we've heard some companies that are very focused on power to gas, mm -hmm. and that is certainly an approach to energy storage. Um, we don't know that that's necessarily a bad approach. But if you remember, some of you may have been here last year when one of my colleagues was on stage. And it's one of those arenas, the, the power to gas, that we continue to watch uh, to see if it's a valuable, uh, it's a value stream that will actually have merit for the long term. I think a lot of people are looking at the hydrogen fueling market as a high value stream use for hydrogen. Not so sure that the putting hydrogen into the, the natural gas pipeline will necessarily be high value stream. I'm not saying it won't, but I think for us, we're, we're analyzing that to see if that's high value stream. And there are other emerging energy markets where it could be a high value stream. The whole biogas processing market, uh, hydrogen could be a very high value stream in that particular market. You know, why not put your uh, emphasis in markets where hydrogen is actually valued much more highly? So that's how we're looking at it. Not saying that power to gas is a bad thing. We're just we're in a uh, monitor mode. Okay. Um, before I pose the, ask the next question, I wanted to remind you that uh, you have to feel free to ask questions as well. We are a public <coughs> forum. Whenever a question comes up to your mind, just raise your hand. I'm coming around with a microphone. So um, let's summarize that. You, you already pointed out some markets. Um, uh, which markets do you see, just to summarize, that do you see and focus on? Well, in the, in the concept of scaling up, uh, we're really talking about emerging energy markets. And, f and for us, the three emerging energy markets that we're looking at are hydrogen fueling, we're looking at renewable energy storage, and we're looking at what we call power to biogas as opposed to just power to gas. So in the emerging energy markets, relative to scaling PEM technology, those are the three we're focused on. And, and what uh, contribution can uh, make PEM electrolysis to the, these markets? Well, I think in renewable energy storage, and it's really a, a characteristic of PEM technology in general, is its ability to rapidly respond to intermittent supply of power. While the wind can start and stop very quickly, and PEM technology lends itself very well to that kind of power supply. So I think that's a major reason you hear many more companies today talking about doing PEM electrolysis than you did in the past. Uh, in, many, in a few cases, companies that have historically been alkaline electrolysis companies are now looking at PEM technology because the technology lends itself so well to those markets. Yeah, you're right. It's true. I um, realize this too. But um, um, what what kind of uh, maybe going going back a little bit? Um, the PEM electrolyzers are long life systems, and you are focusing on the robust aspect of this uh, technology. How? What are we talking about in terms of long life or lifetime? Yeah, I, I think from Proton's perspective, we've always been focused on making sure what goes into the marketplace is reliable and robust for the long term. So we have systems that have been in the field eight years, never had a stack change, continue to operate. We have data that says our systems and stacks can go 100,000 hours. Well, depending on the market, that can be more than 10 years. Uh, so for us, it's all about putting a reliable, robust product into the marketplace we don't, uh, we're not an a la carte menu of producing systems for a specific application. We, our approach has been to put robust, reliable systems in the field. Now, as we scale up, and some of these markets have unique needs, we may need to do a few different things within our multi-megawatt system for a specific market segment. But in the design process and development process, will be able to make those unique changes without much disruption to the system as a whole. So you're flexible there? We you are. You stick to your uh, focus on robust, long life systems. Th that will yeah. be the intent going forward, yes. OK, I heard your colleague Everett um, discussing the topic, I think, two or three hours ago. And he said you have uh, systems running uh, about 10 years in the field now. 
and you guarantee a lifetime of 60,000 hours, I think, was that a number? That's correct. We've, we've had system that have, systems that have operated at least 60,000 hours in the field in a number of different applications, bad environments, good environments, uh, and, and that's all possible because we don't put things into the field uh, before we've thor thoroughly tested them in our own facilities to make sure that they're able to operate. We already uh, talked about uh, the, your next goal to um, scale up to the multi-megawatt uh, range. Um, how do you take the steps there? What's, what are the next st steps? Well, much like we've done with every iteration of our product development, we, uh, we start at the fundamental level, which is the stack, and we make sure that the stack accomplishes the output goals of multi-megawatt. Uh, and then it's the balance of plant and the system that goes around that stack uh, it has to obviously make sure that it communicates well with the stack for the applications that it's intended to be used for. So the stack is, is essentially complete and now we're working with a number of different suppliers on the balance of plant system that will go around it. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much, Mark. Uh, I think we have time for one or two questions, if there are some coming up here. If not, uh, you're invited to follow Mark to his booth. It's um, number C70, which is right yeah. behind us here to the left side. There are any questions coming up. So um, I think tomorrow you're talking to us again. Yes. Yeah, about uh, the status of the hydrogen and fuel cells industry in the USA. That's correct. At three o'clock. So if you want to join him there, then you're invited too. Yeah. Then first, thanks Thank you for very being much. here. Thank, Thank you. you.